Alrighty, I think I should be on. Let's see. Streaming, streaming, got ZBrush going. Alrighty, and I do have Facebook up so I can see Facebook comments. I may see them in Restream. We'll see how that goes. All right, um, can I pause this? No. So it's been a while. Let's see if I remember how to do this whole thing. So we've got ZBrush open. I do have one request that I got a while back uh, to create something like this uh, and then render it in key shots. So with like a bunch of different strands, like a paintbrush type effect. So we can give that a shot. Um, I'm thinking that the easiest way to do that would be insert multi mesh uh, on a curve. And if I'm gonna do something like that, we could start out with like a cylinder. And if I'm gonna make a bunch of these along a just drawn along a curve. Oh, and let me know, testing, testing, that my sound is on if anybody can hear. Oh, you know what? I also forgot to possibly change something really quick. Pixelatic streaming. Let's do this. Cool, you guys can hear me, and I, I assume that the title was okay. It says, yep, yeah, okay, Pavlovich ZBrush Workshop. Alrighty. Cool. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, we can start with this, just a simple cylinder here, and again, if we're going to be dragging maybe 20 of these in a, at, a, at a time, and then also dragging them over time, it's going to be kind of hefty, so what I'm going to do is go down here to initialize, and we'll take this down to maybe a H divide of 8, and then V divides, we'll just drop that all the way down, hit make polymesh 3D. And then if we want to put this along a curve, we can do a tripart curve brush, so we'll go in here to insert multiple edge loops. This is with our Z modeler brush, BZM, BZM. Hover over an edge, go insert multiple edge loops, no interactive elevation, because we don't want to bulge it out, uh, and we're just going to put in a cut like so, and now we can go through, I'm gonna grab this top piece here, control shift, and then W, and then control shift to grab these bottom ones, control W. Now we've got three poly groups here. Uh, let's stretch those out so we're about even. Hit B, create insert mesh, new, and then up here under your stroke menu, we can turn on curve. And now we can, you know, draw out a curve, and then of course under our brush options, we gotta go in here to modifiers, and we gotta go to weld points. Let's turn on stretch and that curve rev, curve res up a little bit, and now we can do that. Now, in order to do this with multiple, uh, a bunch of strands at the same time, we can also say take this and duplicate this over. You know, I'm wondering what if I can like randomly scatter these. So what we're, you know what we'll try this. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's go over here to our, let's make a polyplane here. Make polymesh 3D. I'm gonna go to geometry, hit reconstruct uh, about this many times. And then we'll go to, I guess actually this doesn't really even matter because what I'm gonna do is scatter these points. So I'm gonna say uh, delete higher. I'm gonna hover over this face with the Z modeler brush again. Uh, and first we'll hit M and we'll grab that poly mesh cylinder that we're playing around with. And we're gonna to go to insert nano mesh, poly group all. We can drag that out. And now I'm gonna go over here to my error nano mesh. And we're gonna say alignment, align to normal. They're all pointing the same way. And now let's go ahead and rotate these so that we can see them. Not Y, not X, and not Z. Come on, help me out here. Okay, let's do this. Let's go to, let's turn off align to normal. Let's go up here to geometry modify topology. Um, align edge. And let's see if I can't. Oh, Y rotation zero. There we go, X rotation 90. So now they're all pointing up at me. And now if I wanna randomly scatter these things, I can go up here to random distribution and I can just kind of randomly scatter these points in. So now when I drag these out, they'll kind of give me an interesting brush stroke. Uh, we can also cluster them a little bit more, I believe. So if we go in here and we hold down Alt and we just start painting, 
Um, or we go in here and hold on, I'll start painting these ones. I'm going to see if I can cluster these a little bit more. So now I do random distribution. I'll kind of group them a little bit tighter. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's go up here to geometry, convert BPR to geo, and I'm going to hold on control shift, isolate these. We'll go ahead and split hidden. And oh, you know what? I might have grabbed yeah, when I hit control shift, I grabbed uh, just the top portion here. So I'm going to go scroll back, control shift, control shift A to grab all of it, and then delete hidden. And now uh, this polyplane we don't need anymore, so we'll go ahead and delete that. So now we have these things here, and if I want to, I can also, you know, these things are kind of overlapping a little bit. Um, I can do an auto groups. I guess that'll work. Or we can use, um, let's make our brush size really big. I'm going to go into my move brush. I'm going to go down here to auto masking, turn on topological. And I'm just going to kind of tweak these little things out of the way. Actually, let's make our brush size really small. Change my mind. Um, so you can make your brush size really big, but if you also make it really small, it'll go ahead and just move these things out of the way. So now we have a tripart brush of multiple pieces. Hopefully this will work. I think it will. Let's go to B. I, they, they're kind of off alignment just a little bit. Let's go B, create insert mesh, new, and I can fix this in just a second if it doesn't end up working. And then we'll go to stroke, curve mode. And then we'll go to, um, let's see, brush my weld points. Woo, make our brush size small here. Okay. That seems to be working. So if I grab the curve here. Oh, you know what else we should have done is we could have done a length or a, a width variant. So we had like, we could have like little tiny ones mixed with big ones. Uh, that also might have been cool when we were doing our nano mesh. So hey, give that a shot. Anyway, so now we have this multiple repeating piece here. So if we like this, we can go to brush, save as, and we can save this into our ZBrush 2018. Z brushes, um, I don't know, let's insert IMM and we'll call this um, multipath. So now if we want to do some rendering with this thing, we'll go ahead and just grab a poly mesh 3D. I'm gonna go in here, I'm just gonna make, make something. Let's make that brush size a little smaller here. And this can swing, oh, and if you wanna swing this around in a very particular way, what you can do, is you can get to control your curves. We'll go ahead and say append the Z sphere to our scene. And with the Z sphere selected, we'll have W turned on and then we'll hit Q. And we're just gonna drag out a Z sphere chain, Q. And Q just goes into draw mode on these things. So we can go here and then just kind of dictate how we want this thing to kind of wrap around. And you can do this, you can slice through a piece of geometry, you can make a tube and use the bend deformer. There's a lot of different ways you could do this. Um, but this is just one. So we'll go ahead and I'm just hitting Q to add some more divisions and then hitting W so we can go through here. There we go. W to move, move, move. Let's go down and then up. Okay, so something like this. So now I'm gonna go into my Z plugin, we talked about this before. Curve helper, if you don't have curve helper, I'll show you where to install this in just a second. Copy Z sphere chain, grab our star, create curve. And now we can go to our brush multipath and just tap this and now it'll follow along that curve path. If we want to, we can hit six to smooth that curve out. Oof, but it doesn't seem to wanna update that. I think that'll be okay though. That'll work. So we got our little cluster of curves here. I can just tap to get rid of that curve. Let's go ahead and do hide point. That's under visibility. You can do hide point, and then I'm gonna hold down control shift to invert that, delete hidden, and now we can render this thing out and key shot. Um, is there anything we wanna do before we go in there? Nah, I think we're okay. So if we go into render, external render, key shot, BPR. Now we can go into key shot. <gasps> Sorry about all that talking. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. I'm glad you could make it, Michael. Finally, to watch me live. 
Uh, oh, let's see if I'm on the screen here. Let me resize Keyshot. I'm on a I'm on a bit of a large monitor here. Camtasia recorder. Oh, come on. I forgot I had moved some stuff around. Apologize, amateur hour. I think I'd be prepared, but you would think wrong. There we go. Key shot. Now you see it. Now, the reason... Here's the thing. I bring it in to Keyshot, and you're going to see it's all faceted, and it's all uh, hard edges, and I want these to be soft edges, right? Well, instead of dividing this thing up or doing subdivisions in ZBrush, I think I think what I'm going to prefer to do in this case is we're going to go to Edit Geometry here with this scene. And these are all just one piece, so Geometry View. So we're going to have this one selected. And we're going to say we want to edit the normals of this object, and we want to calculate the vertex normals, and then we want to hit apply. There we go. So we can go ahead and soften these things out without having to add a whole bunch of overhead of geometry. Now I may have to go back and add geometry if it shades weird, but we'll see how this goes. So now if we were to put on, and it looked like in my streaming topics it was kind of like a glass thing. Um, that's another thing too, is I should have before I came in, I could have split these up into individual pieces. I think I can still do that in Keyshot. Let's do this. Edit, Geometry, this one. And let's see if we can split separate objects. So you can do that in ZBrush, or you can just do it in Keyshot after the fact. Maybe. Let's try that again. Edit, Geometry. Split separate objects. Edit, Normals, Close Mesh. Uh, oh, select this one, split all. Apply. Duh. So now all these are individual ones. So now I can go in here to say like a glass. And you can choose like just a colored glass or a red glass or a ridged glass. Uh, another thing too, you can go into liquids. If that's your thing, we can make a beer one. And on these ones, let's go ahead and change that transparency distance to like two or one and then uh, let's see Chardonnay uh, what else we got some translucent uh, or you know what? let's go to plastic cloudy plastics are kind of cool but I want a clear plastic we can play around with some of these I don't know. And of course, I'm just throwing these on haphazardly. All different colors. This is probably going to look pretty gross. But uh, And then once you've got these, if you want to repeat any of these, you can go over, here, go over here and just drag on from here. And now all of these will be assigned to the same object here. So we can grab some more Chardonnay, some more glass, some more beer. And... Oh, you know what? Let me see. No, I guess that's right. Uh, another thing we might be able to do is let's select these objects here because the um, we can do a round ed edged radius, but we can't do it's not a NURB surface, so we can't automatically tessellate. So the tessellation isn't great. So that would be something that I would probably want to go through and bring back in a slightly more tessellated object here. But let's go to Jewelry, and this will bring in our caustics, and now it'll allow us to kind of render uh, through these things. Uh, if we want to get rid of the rest of these gray ones, we can go over here to our materials. We can say Select Object with Material. It's like, oh, that's the part. So let's go to Materials here, and I'm just going to assign this one to it, and then Select Objects with Material. And assign this one to it. Select object with material and assign this one to it. So something like that, maybe. Uh, question: uh, Hi, are you from Russia? No, uh, and f I think I'm from. Cro well, it's hard to say. I, have, I haven't done my lineage yet, but I think somewhere around Croatia, I think. And my last name would be Pavlovich, and I think it would be a C with a little line over it. Is how they used to spell it. So what we're making now is just, uh, this was a request um, I got a long time ago, so how to make something like a bunch of twisted strands and stuff. Oh, that's another thing too. So let's say we want to have a little bit more fun with this. So let's go out of edit mode, hit control N, 
And let's say on our brush here, let's go to our stroke menu. Oh, I guess I can get rid of this thing too. And we choose a uh, curve mode. So brush, let's bring on a little star. Brush, curve mode, as line. So we'll go just straight out here. So we have this here. And then we want to say, actually, let's make this a little bit longer. There we go. I'm going to go to do uh, just tap off to get rid of that curve. If you can't, then just go up here to the curve functions and hit delete. And we'll go ahead and say, instead of hiding the point and then deleting it, we'll go to uh, split mass points just to split this off into its own subtool. We'll hit W and we'll say bend. Let's do bend curve. This will give us a little bit more control. And then over here we have a curve resolution. We can crank that up. Eh, not that much. We'll keep it a little simple. And you can also choose your axis going down the axis like this you can go through and you can change uh, which axis you choose but we'll go ahead and and this will allow whoa I'm having a hard time dialing this thing in one not seven not six just a few goodness my uh, performance seems to be dipping on the bend curve. So anyway, you can go through here and you can just grab a piece and then bend it out. And yeah, for some reason, bend curve has been a little bit iffy with me lately. You can also go through here with your bend curve and you can twist. This mesh might be a little heavy, but uh, anyway, you can use bend curve. You can add resolution. You can go through here and you can twist down the curve. You can also use a twist deformer if you wanted to and then use bend curve. Um, or you don't even have to use a twist deformer. You can go to your deformer menu, but we'll try that. Let's say we want to do a twist deformer. And we'll go down the axis. There we go. So you can kind of twist these things. We'll twist this thing here. We'll say accept. Now on this one, let's do this. Let's say I want to do auto groups to get these all their into each individual on their own strands. And then we're also going to do a crease, let's do a crease tolerance. We're going to raise that crease tolerance up. So we're just going to crease these edges here. And then I'm going to hit control D to subdivide this once. And I think that'll be better. So we can take this into key shot. So let's go ahead and say BPR render. Hop back over. I'll go ahead and hide our original one. So here's our new one. Oh, and before we brought this in, we could have split the object up. I forgot. Uh, let's do that. So we've got this thing here, and we've got all these different polygroups here. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go to Geometry, Delete, Lower, and then we're going to get Split, Group Split. And now all of these pieces will be individual subtools. And then the star we don't really need. And it's not visible, so I won't send it over, but we'll just go ahead and delete it. Now we'll hit BPR, and then we'll head back over to Keyshot. Okay. Oh, uh, that was weird. Uh, let's do this. Let's go to render, turn off key shot, turn it back on, hit BPR. Yeah, and it, well, that's the thing though. Is So with the bend deformer, I feel like I used to get better performance before 28. I could be wrong. Um, and I am, I am on a new, I updated my specs and I'm not optimized really to work in ZBrush necessarily. I'm on the, I upgraded to the 2990WX here. So, uh, and it's optimized great to work with Keyshot. As you can see, we're using all 32 cores to render in Keyshot. So if I go up here, uh, we're actually only using 88%. If we jump, you know, we'll dump this up to 97%. We can use all 64. I don't think it'll hurt the stream at all. Um, so it says 64 cores, it's really 64 threads, 32 cores. We'll dump up it up to 97. Um, so now again, we can go in here to edit geometry. And then we'll grab all the, uh, we gotta do this one by one. Ah, you know what? It probably would have been easier to go in here, do my normals, and then uh, split them apart in Keyshot. Eh, live and learn. So we'll do that.
So to get these all back together, you can go through and merge these one by one, or you can go to Merge Visible. That'll be your merged option here. And now we can go through here and we can say BPR. And then maybe let's go File, New. Oh, it did, it, it did bring it in. It just took it a second. Sorry, Keyshot. All right, there we go. Give me a sec. Okay. All right, finally. And now uh, we've got this one here. And we go to Edit, Edit Geometry. Go ahead and do our normals real quick. Next, select it, calculate, apply. Nice and smooth. And we'll go back to our plastic. Clear, let's just narrow this down. We want clear, shiny only. And we'll go, oh, we gotta split these apart. Sorry, one more time. There we go. Now, we got blue, and then if I want to drag more blue, I can go your blue, and your blue, and your blue, and your blue, and your blue. And then if I want another color, like green, I can say you're green, and now you're the same green, you're the same green. And then if I want yellow, this will be the last one. Alrighty, and then if we want our real render, um, did that split the caps off too? No? Alright. Uh, we can go into our lighting menu and we can say turn on jewelry and that'll give us our, you know, our caustics and stuff. We can go in here to our environments. We can say go to the basement, studio, let's go to our environment over here. We'll say turn on a color. Okay, let that res in. Okay, uh, and if I miss, oh, I forgot. If I miss any um, comments and stuff, just keep hollering them out. I, I don't mean to skip any. Um, how will you sculpt the character in ZBrush and Rig and Maya? Okay, uh, that would take me quite a while to explain all that. Um, now rigging in Maya, that's something, that's a whole, that's a whole different beast, but, uh, sculpting a character in ZBrush is pretty easy. It's, it's built really well for that, uh, depending on how far you want to go. If you go to, say, my art station page, let's go to my profile. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here. This is all start to finish character creation type stuff. If you want to, and you can see me, like, go through here and concept this stuff out. You can also go to my YouTube channel and that'll walk you through how to make, you know, this type of character. It's fun. These are a little, these are, these are a little bit dated. <clears throat> On my CG Master Academy course, um, I made this guy over the six week course. So, and you, you basically start out with, you know, something just kind of block it in and then you go through and you refine and stuff. The CG Academy port course is actually really intense nowadays. It's, here's the video list. I got all new videos. Oh, I need to get the new videos out. I'm going to put Unit 0 out for free on my YouTube channel. It's 50, 53 videos, and then the rest of the weeks are all of these videos here. So a lot of content covered in that class. And it's not necessarily how to create a character, um, but there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Oh, speaking of, I mean, uh, I guess we did it here too. If you go to my... So I have my YouTube channel... And I also have, so here's my YouTube channel. If you go to my playlist here, I'll link you guys to this. There's just a bunch of stuff in there. Um, let me go ahead and get rid of that. You can go there. And also on this, where I'm streaming right now, is the Pavlovich Workshop. If you scroll all the way down, we start out with kind of making a character. We start out with... Um, you know, anatomy and then sculpting it up. Again, these are pretty dated. These are from a while back, but uh, I suppose I'd do it generally the same way. And then we go all the way back through and then we end up sculpting, 
you know, she's got her bodysuit and stuff like that. I can load that up if we want to go down that route. But I can link you guys to this thing too. Of course, if you just go to the Pixelogic YouTube channel, yeah, there's a lot of really talented people down there, and they've sculpted characters way better than I do, so you can check them out. You just go to this Pixelogic ZBrush here. And then all of their live streamers, if you go to videos here, they'll walk you through how to make all sorts of cool videos and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so this resed in, and you, you don't have to wait for it to res this. You can just go to render, and you can make this. You can do render passes and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, uh, let's see. I guess we don't need this anymore. Um, how would you bring Marvel's Designer model into Keyshot? Because every time I bring to ZBrush, my model breaks up from the seams. Uh, I purposefully uh, break up on the seams in Marvelous Designer just because I like, you know, where I put my seams is usually where I put like stitching detail or I want to inflate the edges. So I'll bring in stuff from Marvelous Designer. If you go to my YouTube channel, there's a Marvelous and ZBrush quick start you can check out. And this is kind of going from Marvelous to ZBrush, using ZBrush to re using Z Remesh to retopologize and then uh, give thickness and then project details back and then going in here and detailing up your mesh, and then that's when I would take it into um, Keyshot at that point. Um, but if you if it is breaking it up into ZBrush, uh, you can bring it in, and then you can just go to Geometry, Modify, Topology. If you don't want to go through all that, uh, Weld Points. You can weld the points here, and I wonder if on Import... You can have merge points turned on. So have, go down here to import, have merge turned on, and then when you load in, or you import uh, from key or from uh, Marvelous, it'll go ahead and weld your points for you. Or if you don't want to do that, import it, and then geometry modify topology weld points. And if the points are on top of each other, which from Marvelous they probably will be, um, it'll go ahead and weld them. If it doesn't, you can zero mesh it all together. But I don't know, that might be a little bit more of a trail. Um, but da, 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 da. yeah, thanks for showing up. It's been a while. Um, yeah, the bend one, the bend one is actually, it's pretty good. Like this is how I usually use it. So if I go in here to say, uh, I'll grab our trusty poly mesh here, go down here to initialize and then Q cube and then here and then insert multiple edges. So I'm, yeah, I'm kind of afraid to use it now on anything accidentally large. But if we hit W and then we go in here to bend curve, um, now it's nice and responsive. We can choose our axis and then we can choose our resolutions. You see, oh, it's nice and responsive, no big deal. You can go through here and you can curve this stuff around. And you can go up here to your smoothness. You can do smoothness on each individual one or overall um, smoothness on, your, on all the dots. So we'll go ahead and stretch this out a little bit here. So this is just a way to kind of go through and bend some stuff around and then also let's actually let's change our curve resolution down this might break it oh it just works fine okay so if we have this again we can go through here and you can do a twist along the ear along these axis you can also scale it and taper it all that good stuff so it works fine on low resolution objects but the higher the resolution the more it just really bogs my machine down um, I'm not sure how much that processor was off the top of my head. If you're looking for a mix between a lot of cores for rendering or uh, just processing video and also performance, I think the 2550X is probably your better bet. That's going to have a higher uh, clock speed. And it'll have fewer cores, but it'll have um, a higher speed. So right now I'm at uh, hovering around 3-ish. But the 2550X has a little bit higher clock speed. Uh, I went from the 1950X, which is the original Threadripper. Um, where did you get the environments? Oh, uh, when you get the ZBrush bridge, it will... Um, it'll bring in the environment. You can, you can download the environment pack. Uh, as far as the ZBrush environments. Yeah, uh, Video Nomad, I agree. 
Uh, another question for baking high res models to low res with multiple objects is the workflow any different if that asset needed to be animated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's wait for that to shut down. I'll load it back up. Um, watch this. You need to get game dev videos, but the asset doesn't articulate the decimation topology change a lot of triangles. Is that bad for animation? Yeah, and if you want to do like Pixar style animation and emoting, then you're going to want to. Uh, you know, go through there and plot that topology out perfectly. Um, and you can you can kind of, if you go, uh, I'm trying to remember when the last time we did this. I think on this one we did do, let me go to streaming. It's been a while. Old man, whoops. We went through and did a little bit of painting on this guy. Uh, let's turn off our... So you can go through here, and you can use Ziri Mesher to get you a decent amount of the way there if you wanted to. Um, but you can also go through here and manually just retopologize everything uh, perfectly to get your edge flow and stuff for animation. So I don't know. And you can also use Ziri Mesher to start and then bring that into a Z sphere and then go and clean it up. Or you can use any other topology program in the world that you want to. Uh, but if you need to have very very precise vert layout, then yeah, I would say manual, re like, decimating or having a bunch of triangles isn't great. However, I would say that you can do this once, and then on your LODs, just copy those weights, and then depending on how far away from the camera it is, you're probably not going to notice a ton of um, bad stuff going on, but you could also just use your LOD system to, you know, keep your quads decently, so might be a moot point. Uh, John says, just curious, have you changed a lot of your tools that workflow since 2018 came out? Or are you still using older methods? Like, what don't you use anymore uh, that you used to? Um, I'm getting, I'm very, very much more into Z Modeler. I don't do a lot of sculpting anymore. I mean, I guess I do. I'll do sculpting for like blockouts and uh, Dynamesh and sculpting for just kind of, <clears throat> you know, getting my ideas out. But yeah, I don't really. I don't spend a ton of time sculpting anymore, it seems. It seems like I do, but I'm also doing a lot more hard surface stuff, so that might be why. I do. I see, I see myself doing a lot more Z Modeler stuff. I'm trying to remember of like 2018 specifically. Speaking of, if you are on my YouTube channel, you can go to <clears throat> here's the Zebras 408 What's New playlist, and also the Zebras 2018 What's New. For me personally, I don't use a ton of Sculptures Pro because, again, I'm doing a lot of hard surface stuff. And then, I'm trying to remember in anything in 2018, I don't use the Project Primitive that much because I don't do a ton of that type of soft shape concepting together. I probably should use it more. Uh, I use a lot of live Booleans. A lot of the deformers I do use a lot now. Yeah, um, yeah, I, Sculptures Pro, Poly Group It, and um, I don't use those a ton. And Project Primitive, I don't use a ton, uh, but I do use a lot of the new uh, deformers. Um, for. Yeah, uh, yeah, so. Do you plan on doing likeness tips? It's really hard to know how to start uh, for a likeness. I would just go into um, have a base mesh because it's easier. So go over here to tool and Nick Z humanoid. My Nick Z is going to be a little bit different than yours, but if let's say we want to grab the head and all the pieces here, and then we go to split hidden, and then we can delete the body. And I think I have some pictures on my desktop here. So let's go to import. Uh, my desktop here, yeah, and then we get, if you want to do a likeness, have a bunch of pictures of the head that you want to do a likeness from, and then go to texture, grab it, import it, drop that intensity down on your Z, uh, your spotlight, and then now you just want to line your head up, and let's go, ahead. perspective turned on, let's go over here to documents, I'm sorry, draw, an angle of view, I'm going to change this like down to 17. I think that'll probably match that camera a little bit better. And now you're off to the races. So if you want to save these, or save these views that you have, I like to go into Movie, Timeline, Show, 
click on here. So if you're ever modeling and stuff, you can just hit the back arrow and the front arrow and it'll pop it back into place. And now you just got to go through. And here's the really fun part is meticulously moving all of this stuff into place. So I'm just kidding. I find this really tedious, but um, if you're into likenesses, this would be one way you could do it. Um, you can also paint through here and it looks like we're almost, we're almost there. And now you don't have to do this if you don't want, you can just take a base head and I mean, you don't even have to take a base head. You can take a sphere and turn it into Dynamesh or use Sculptors Pro and just sculpt out a head and then go through and just eyeball it. You know, you have your reference up on the side and then you're just going back and forth and just kind of looking at stuff. Um, but for my money, I think we're almost done. And you know, the more views you can bring in, the better. We'll have a little bit more weight around the mouth here. We can go into our clay brush and kind of build this up a little bit. So, there's our likeness. Um, at this point, uh, and you know, bring in more views, snap to those views. Uh, you can also snap to multiple views if you bring in like a sheet of them. You can go, let's go drag this off. I have a front view and then a profile view and then a three quarter view. And then you can just use your arrow keys to snap between them as you're modeling it. So you can do that. And if you don't need this timeline anymore, you can turn off show. You can hit uh, control D to subdivide this up. And then, oh, you know what? I guess I shouldn't have deleted those keys just yet because we can also, and this is for modeling as well as, you know, getting your likeness in there. You can go into your, I guess that lip line is a bit up. There we go. Uh, so we're going to go into RGB and you can go through and you can, oops, paint on here. Let's turn off our polyframe. And of course you're going to want to line this up, but, and then, you know, sculpt it out and you can use your poly paint to kind of dictate where your details are going to go. And as you're subdividing, you're going through here and you're, you know, you got your reference up and you're going through here and you're sculpting up and you're smoothing and you're, defining these things and using your move brush to kind of go through and do all that stuff. Again, stuff I find pretty, pretty tedious, but for you likeness people out there, that's be, that would be how I would start anyway. That seems fairly straightforward. Uh, workflow for creating skin material and shaders. I haven't made a material in forever. Uh, much, much, much more smarter people than me do that. It would essentially be baking out my maps, my translucency maps and my detail normals and uh, normal maps. And if I wanted to go from like, I would do a, maybe a bake a displacement map from subdivision level one to two or three, and then a normal map for all my details from subdivision level three to four to five to six to seven, depending on how high I go. And then uh, taking those into another renderer like, um, I don't know, whatever render you, Arnold, V-Ray, Redshift, Octane, Marmoset, um, Keyshot, any other ones that I miss? Cinema 4D, <laughs> whatever, whatever render you want to do. Cool, let me see if I missed anything from Facebook. All right, I think we're in good shape. And I don't have anything. I'm going through my streaming topics here. I don't, nothing's jumping out at me as... Anything I haven't done yet. Mm -hmm. We made we made a donut. We've done nano mesh. I really don't have anything in specific. So if you guys have any questions or anything you want me to cover in depth, we can do that. Um, also, if I wanted to have that reference up available for me to look at, uh, I can use see through and I can like see through to my desktop and have it back there. Uh, I have multiple monitors set up so I can use Quadro. Uh, oh yeah, Quadro just got updated if you guys use that program. Um, Quadro reference viewer is now version 9. Point something. Oops, 9.5. So you guys can check that out if you want to. That's my reference viewer I like to use. Um, 
And then also what we can do is we can go in here to texture and we have this texture uh, on here. So with that texture selected, we can go in here to our polyplane, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, uh, go down here to texture map, select our texture map. And then we're going to hold down um, under poly paint, poly paint from texture, hold down shift. And that'll go ahead and make our polyplane match the dimensions of our original image. And then we're going to turn our texture back on. And then we'll go over here and choose a flat color. So now we have a reference plane that we can put anywhere in our, in our scene. We can do shift to S and that'll save a snapshot. So if you had a bunch of stuff, you could just layer those or plop those right into ZBrush here, go out of edit mode, and then go grab our head, go back into matcap gray. And now we've got those little reference image planes. You can also sample from these things, I think. So you can hit C and you can sample color. So we can go color, fill object, and actually let's change the skin shader four. And you can sample this one here. And I'll turn that RGB intensity down. So you can go through here and you can sample from here to your object over here. Uh, any chance of an Unreal Engine workflow demo? Um, really, the only thing it would be, and I'm, I don't think I have Unreal set up on this machine, the only thing that would be different from my workflow, let me see, from essentially ZBrush to Substance Painter, or ZBrush to Substance Painter to Sketchfab, it would be Go to ZBrush, I would do my auto game res dev tool set thing, or I could manually do it, but that would be, you know, hours and hours worth of manual retopology UVs and baking. Uh, and then put that into Unreal. It would essentially be going into Painter, setting up either my layered material workflow so that it would be um, color IDs that I would assign materials for in Unreal. Or if I'm just going baking zero to one, one off, um, I would go through Painter, and then in Painter, I'd export to all my textures from packaged uh, for Unreal. And then really, it's just like saving an FBX out and then just dragging that into Unreal and then dragging my materials onto that. Um, so really, the Unreal part is just dragging FBX into Unreal. Um, the more difficult thing would... The setup is the more difficult thing. Um, so I'd, I'd have to have something kind of ready to go to demo that type of thing. Uh, I, question, can you help me, Broski? I want a 3D printed head that is two inches tall. Do I need to make details sharper? Um, that one, I would say make your details larger. Uh, I'm not a 3D printing expert by any means, but if we wanted to say, actually, you know what? I can show you, I can kind of show you something. This is a little bit dated, but if we go to my intro, reptile creature. So we have this. One here, oops, and let's hit Control N on edit mode, hit F. So for instance, we have this one here, and then minus the spit, you can get rid of that. Uh, this was 3D printed, and let me see if I can find that video real quick. Uh, by Louise. So in my Reptile Creature series, there's a couple of videos on like 3D print setup and stuff. This is on the MakerBot uh, and, you know, varying degrees of quality, high, medium, and low. So, and we talk a little bit about that. If you're into 3D printing and you want to do cleanup stuff uh, on my ArtStation page, you go to my profile, there is a section on 3D print cleanup. Uh, we, I printed these out, and also if you wanted to model these things, there's a section on stylized modeling if you want to just do cartoony stuff, or super cartoony. This is like beyond stylized. This is like cylinders and stuff. But if you wanted to, um, I have a whole section on like, here's a bunch of stuff I bought and gave it a shot, and then we ended up printing them out at fairly low quality as a test, and I was like, you know what, I'll just take these and clean them up. Bad idea. Print it out as high quality as you can uh, to save you a lot of time, but I go through all the different things to kind of go through and patch these things and clean them up and paint them up, but all that good stuff. So again, I learned a lot. It didn't, wasn't as clean as I would have wanted, but hey, I give it the old college try. 
Uh, is Fibronash a nice tool for face hair, not hair or beard, just the tiny short hairs we have through the skin? Um, Maya is key for doing that in this case. Um, yeah, I think so. Like that kind of peach fuzz kind of skin. I think you. I think it's okay if we go here um, and we say. I guess we can subdivide this all the way up to five. Let's make sure it doubles off. So yeah, kind of those really really fine hairs on your face. Um, we can try doing. I mean, obviously you want to mask where you want it to go, and where you don't want to go in this case is probably more important if you want it to go everywhere, pretty much. We're going to say, don't put it on our cartilage ears, don't put it on our lips, don't put it in our mouth, and I think we have this guy divided up so we can go in here and just isolate that. And uh, probably don't put it on our eyelids. But other than that, um, and also if he's bald, Probably don't have any on his head here. And then if we go in here to uh, invert this. Yeah. And then go over here to fiber mesh. And now I don't know the exact settings you would want to use, but we can say preview. <laughs> and uh, there you go. We're done. Beautiful. Perfect. Let's go to modifiers here and we'll change that length profile way down. And then depending on how dense uh, you want these things and also the coverage, you can change those. So they're really, really just tiny little meshes. And also underneath my masking, let's go turn off view mask so we don't have to look at it. And then now we have, you know, little tiny hairs. And also gravity's on, so I think all the hairs are kind of bent down. Um, if you want them to go straight out, you can change the gravity down to zero. I don't know if that makes a bunch of a difference, but at this scale... And then you can also change the max fibers if you want to have more hairs. Yeah, so something like that maybe. Uh, merge, uh, any tips for merging sub tools for 3D print? I lose a lot of details with Dynamesh and trying to go for more resolution. So what I would do is instead of doing Dynamesh, I mean, Dynamesh is great for closing holes, don't get me wrong, but if I load in, I'm trying to think if I have a good, a good example here that's not going to, really bog my machine down here. Let's go to the tools. Let's grab that demo soldier. So yeah, this, this guy here. Uh, so of course, in order to merge all of these pieces together and have them stick together, one way you can do that is Dynamesh. Another way you can do it is just to go to, um, let's do a merge visible. You got this merge one here. Hit W and go in here and do a uh, remesh by union. Um, you can also do what you could have just done underneath your subtool here. You can go Boolean, make Boolean mesh. There's another option, remesh by Boolean. And now all of these pieces will be one solid piece. Now there's probably holes scattered throughout here because you know you gotta make sure if you're gonna remesh by Boolean that all of these pieces, like you don't want any of these undercuts through here. So you'd have to do, and yeah, all of this stuff is all separated out. So actually, you know what, let's do this. Let's do delete all. Let's. So if we wanted to do uh, remesh by Boolean here, you don't again, you don't have to do remesh by Boolean. You can just go Boolean, turn on your Boolean render. We're just going to make a Boolean mesh. And then I'll go through your subtools and make a union mesh here. I'll show you this in just a second once it's done. Yeah, as John says, uh, Paint on Unreal setup is a pain. Yeah, and it... And it especially when you get into the layered materials and you want to ha you have to be smart about where those materials go and how many you have assigned per object or assigned per part of your mesh. Um, that can get a little bit tricky for optimization purposes, but okay. So that remesh by union. So now uh, if we go and grab this one, you're going to be like, okay, Hey, it's all put together, right? Well, probably not because if we go through here, you're going to see, all those little scales in here 
um, or, or lift it up. So, I mean, you can go through here and before you do your remesh by union, you can go through here and you can close up all those little gaps and stuff. That can be kind of a, a trial, right? So another option you can do is, like you said, you can do Dynamesh. So if I do this, the lower the resolution I go with my Dynamesh, the more it's the more resolution I'm going to have, uh, the less resolution I'm going to have. So as I, you're going to see, as I drop this resolution down, you can see we're losing detail, but as I drop the resolution down, these spaces are becoming more and more closed. Now, here's the thing with the resolution. Uh, you don't have to stick with this resolution. What you can do is, before you start uh, losing your detail, duplicate this guy off, and then on this one, we can do our Dynamesh here. And it's like, okay, we lost, if you go into solo mode, it's like, okay, we lost a little bit of resolution. But once you get your solid envelope, and that's just a matter of going through here and redynameshing, and then once you're so nice and solid here, you can go through and you can now say, uh, you can subdivide this up or you can dynamesh at a higher resolution. So geometry, um, you can hit divide, and then you can just go up here to project all underneath your subtool. So you can have your Dynamesh to make your envelope, and then you can project your details back using Project All. Give it a second. And then we'll look at our whole situation. And then I'll give you one more technique that you can use. I was actually just recently doing this for my class. Still semi-fresh in my brain. There we go. So, uh, now we've got our details back. So if we go, and we're in solo mode here, so we're going to click on our original. And then we're going to click on this one. They look the same to me. So with this one here, uh, we can see how our holes are doing. And it looks like we still missed a bunch. So here's another option. And this it's just a lot of cleanup. So in, instead of doing all that, I'm going to take this one here. And I think it's, it is mirrored across the x-axis. So we're going to duplicate this off. And then with this one selected, instead of, actually, we don't even need a duplicate. With this one, we're going to go down here to remesh. We have the x-symmetry turned on, so let's going to leave that on. And then, oops, hold on just a second. Um, so we can remesh. That's weird. Let me see, duplicate, or if we clone it. Creating a 3D mesh on the current selected tool and skinning modifiers proves a mesh with zero number of vertices and polygons. Hmm, hmm, let's see. Let me go to unify. Oh, you know what? Let me turn off light boolean. Maybe that's doing it. I'll give that a shot. Um, so one thing you can do is you can use remesh to give you a blanket over your object. So that's not going to have any holes at all. And then you can use project all and your Z project brush to clean up any details that you may have lost. And then you'll have a very nice, concise, um, Just do this. Intro sample files. And again, picking and choosing your battles, you probably don't want anything like that spit might not translate very well into 3D. Um, but let me go grab this thing here. And again, you know, feel free to give Dynamesh a shot. If you want to, if you're losing detail, or you got the you got the holes still in your mesh when you do that, which you probably will. If we go in here to clear all those up, let's try a there we go remesh. Let's crank this resolution up quite a bit, and we'll hit remesh all, and that's again going to give us our blanket of quads here. So if we go into solo mode, you're going to be like, oh wow. So if we go through here now and we look at these. No inside faces. Uh, looks like we got maybe one down here. No. That looks all right. But anyway, so once we have a nice mesh that's nice and airtight, at this point, we have our lower selected, our high res showing, and now we can just do a project all. And then again, if it's, if it's not high resolution enough, we can hit control D. 
and then project all and just keep doing that until you get your resolution back. And now we can go through here. If we look, looks much better. And then also we have our details back. And then now at this point, you can go in here to Z plugin, decimation master, preprocess current. And we'll knock this back. Um, so a question, if I was sending to a company, what I need to clean up? That kind of depends on the company. Uh, some It's been a long time since I've done any of this type of thing. In fact, I was just talking about this the other day. Um, on E3D and then Mind's Eye Studio is the last time I've done any of this type of stuff. So if we go to Art Station and go to my profile, 3D printing side, there was this guy here that made for Eat 3D, and then they printed these out. Uh, they sent these off to be printed, and they did molds and then cast them. So there's a bunch of different copies. So I have a painted version, and then I have like a cold cast version. They're about the size of my head. And then for Mind's Eye Studio. Um, I made this base and then I, I took the uh, epic character files and kind of posed them out for reference for the sculptors to use. So there's a Marcus Phoenix and I think there's there was three of them total. I don't have the other ones up, but I have a, a boomer right behind me. But um, these things are cold cast, so they're really, really heavy that you can polish them just like metal. Um, so those are really cool. So anyway, oh yeah, so we're going to decimate this down to like maybe 350k. And then if you've watched the Zebras 2018 What's New, you know that if you ever need to go back through after you've decimated, um, and, you, and you're like, oh, you know what, I want to I wanna sign, sign my piece down here. So I'm going to go down here with my standard brush, crank that intensity up. Let's turn our lazy radius off by tapping L. You can go through here, and it's like, oh, I can't sign Michael. So what you can do is with Sculptures Pro mode turned on, you can go through here and you can add some resolution. And now you can go... Like so. Um, also, well, yeah, that would be that would be my general cleanup process, and then the three D print hub is where all your scale stuff. That and Scale Master. If you go to Scale Master here, you can watch Joseph Dress talk about all the Scale Master stuff that you can check out. And also, there's you can walk through these um, tutorials here. I'll tell you how to. Scale your stuff. Do you have to do anything special when making blend shapes that will be imported into Houdini, or are they just regular blend shapes? Um, I haven't actually done blend shapes in Houdini. I would imagine it would be, yeah, as long as you don't change the vert order. There is a Z plugin. Uh, Maya blend shapes, export blend shapes. Layers will be exported from the lowest subdivision level. I think you could probably use this, or you can just export out your um, manually and then bring those into Houdini later, um, for example. And if you want to test them out, you can do linear interpolation in ZBrush using layers. So if we grab our streaming, let's go grab that old man again. So if we go down here to layer one, you see we have um, tons of geometry that we can play with. So what we can do is we can go in here to layers, we can make a new layer. And then on this layer here, I'm going to drop down to subject level one. And let's go ahead and let's mask out our eyeball here. And then we can pull down the brows. Unmask. And then we'll go ahead and tap uh, oh, go back to subdivision level 5, and now we can just tap on this layer to stop recording. So now we have a layer here, so we want to make a new layer, and we can turn this layer off. Um, we can do maybe a smile here, so we got a new, oops, and ZBrush just disappeared. Um, you can go through and you can do 
different layers for different expressions, and then you can dial in and out. So you can do mad brows and smiley face and one eyebrow up, left eyebrow, right eyebrow. Um, not sure why that was a deal breaker. That was weird. Let me see if I can try that again. Let's do this. I'm going to hide everything but this thing, and we're going to go to layers, and we're going to say make a new layer, and we're recording. So I'm going to drop down so there's level one. And again, let's go in here to mask our eyeballs out. Unmask. Go back up. And then, okay, we're good with this layer, so we can turn it off. And then we're going to make a new layer here. So we're recording on this layer now. Go back to suddenly level one. And we can say, let's make one where he's smiling. And you can go through here with your inflate brush. You can inflate up the cheeks a little bit here. And it's going to affect the lower lids just a little bit. And the nose can come up a little bit. Get some good reference. Anyway, so here's our smile. And then also you can grab a little mirror you can have next to your desk here. Uh, so we've got these, we can tap off here. So now we have a smile we can dial in and out. And let's go ahead and say, let's make it creepy. So we can say how much smile we want. You can also go with the opposite. Uh, you can also over crank it if you want to be really smiley or really frowny. Obviously it's probably going to break here, but you can have test those out and then yeah when you use the Z plugin here um, my blend shapes you can export your blend shapes that'll just essentially export out your lowest resolution I'm trying to remember if I've ever actually done that or not but I think that's how it works uh, and here we can also go all lower and then we'll turn off our poly paint and we'll bring everything back there we go <laughs> um, can you use ZBrush for architectural work for creating modular sets like walls, etc.? Yeah, you can do modular. Now, if you're doing very precise modular um, sets, you'd have to be careful. And if you're having to snap vertices and stuff to like a grid, it might you can do it in ZBrush. But it might be easier to do at least the block outs in another program and then bring it into ZBrush to kind of populate your scene. I tend to use ZBrush, and again, this is just me. Uh, I tend to use ZBrush as just a more of a prop modeler, like something I can manipulate, like hero props uh, when it gets into environment stuff. I mean, I'm not an environment artist by any stretch, but uh, I can show you some stuff I did a long time ago that would be, let's go way back in time. Assets, environments. Um, we have a, oh yeah. So if you, you know, this is kind of like the prop modeling thing, and this is just like it's like sketching, like just getting some sketches out. So just going through here and using radial symmetry and just doing a bunch of different types of columns and decorating them real quick. And it, we're talking just minutes per, not 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 anything really refined. Uh, and then adding like little uh, little weirdo attachments and stuff to get all sorts of different type, variations of columns here. Um, so this type of work is really easy to do in ZBrush. Um, not to say it, it isn't all easy to do, but what I'm more comfortable with, I should say. And then the crusher, let's go to the eye room. And that's just another, another mass out. Um, again, it's not real precise, uh, but you can see, okay, here's, here's where you walk in the tunnel. And it gets a little bit weird in ZBrush to be like, well, I want to work on these walls. And, you know, trying to get your camera in there and sculpt on the walls is a little bit difficult. So you basically have to split your scene up so you can go through here and you can kind of start seeing some stuff. You're going to see on these things here, if I hold down control shift and bring it all back, here's the entire wall section. So if I want to see through it, I either have to hide that subtool or hide pieces of that subtool. Same thing with the ceiling here. You can see there's the entire ceiling. And so as you walk in the room, and then you come up through this little area here. Here's the floor. So if we get rid of the ceiling, we can see a little bit better. So now we can go in here and I can sculpt on the floor. So as you're walking through this tunnel down here, you're going to come up through this floor and then you can come up the sides here and you can 
There's a little bowl here that'll have a flame in it, and you can shoot this eyeball, and the eyeball will open. And then this, these doors will open here. So you can say, they go, or something like that. Or maybe, you know what, I think it was this door that opened down here. So here's this little door here, and you can, these things will open. They got a little Dynamesh thing in there. So you can do it, uh, and I'm again, I'm no expert. Other people are much, much better at using ZBrush for environment stuff than I am. Uh, do I have another one? Another mass out here. This is, might have been the one where I used the columns. So again, you know, we got the ceiling up here. We can go ahead and turn that off. And then now, yeah, just kind of again, just a really quick block out. And you can decimate this down and send it in the engine really quickly or go through the Houdini automated pipeline just to see how it looks. But then again, if you're doing very precise uh, terrain traversal or pathing and you want to be very precise where your verts go and lock together, um, there's probably better ways to go about it. But for just kind of having fun, can't beat ZBrush for my money. Uh, is it possible to bake that fiber mesh into the texture? For example, for character textures, if you had like that face fuzz, you can, because um, it's just geometry. You can export it as just geometry. Uh, I don't know how the map will handle that being baked, like little little bitty fibers. Um, now, if you're doing stylized stuff, you certainly can. In fact, that this guy right here, so here's a little bit more of a higher resolution. You can kind of see this is very nice fiber mesh for the 3D print. I did big chunky fiber meshes, so I could still get the look of fibers, but it wouldn't be super fine and brittle. Um, so you can use fiber mesh like that as a more chunky solution. But uh, And then you can bake that detail here. If you made it chunky stylized, you could make an envelope of that and then bake these details in for sure. Um, super fine detail, I'm not positive how it would handle that. Uh, if you think external application like Blender would be better for creating sharp armor pieces, uh, you can use anything for sharp. I, I can't imagine any 3D program package nowadays that can't do sharp armor. Uh, Blender's a fine one. Uh, in fact, just recently I was on uh, with Jerry Perkins doing a, a kind of a live stream. Let me see if I can find that. Um, It might, it might be on my Twitter or something like that. Um, anyway, he's the uh, hard ops blender guy. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to go through my Twitter to find that link. But uh, you can, you can go look for that. Um, but yeah, any I'm trying to think, yeah. Any any program should be able to make hard surface armor. I, I prefer ZBrush just because uh, it's fun, uh, but that certainly is to say you can't use whatever you want. Uh, how do you understand C primary, secondary, tertiary forms from concept art to characters, creatures? Um, that's just kind of being mindful, and it's, I'm not an expert at that either, but uh, as you're going through... And I'm trying to get heavier into the design side of things. I've been on the workflow and pipeline stuff for many, many years. So I'm revamping the design side of stuff. But um, for I guess it's just being mindful uh, when you're looking at, even if you're sculpting somebody else's stuff or using somebody else's concept, being able to go through there and look at a concept and determine why it's successful or why it's appealing, why their material breakup works why it's got good weight and balance and structure and form and again all those things that make something appealing just kind of studying that from people you really like uh, through whatever resource you want to find those people's work on Pinterest or ArtStation or CG Society or whatever their website um, yeah I wish I had a better more concise answer for you but Um, how is scale handled in ZBrush? Like you want to create a screw port or a hole at a specific size. So you can do, there is that new IMM draw size um, option here. You can set it to however many millimeters. So as you set your IMM draw size, you can set it for an exact size and that'll keep it 
um, the same. And that's if you want to keep it, ex like if you want to print it out for jewelry or something. Um, as far as, so scale in ZBrush, if you go through the Scale Master, he'll, Joseph Dress will explain it a lot better than I do. But essentially what it is doing in ZBrush is whenever you bring in an uh, external object from like Fusion 360 or Maya or whatever, uh, if you go down here to your size, you're going to see Chops McGee's head, the size is set to three. So ZBrush tries to keep this around two-ish. And then on export, depending on what you brought in or how you brought it in or what scale it, the unit scale, the generic unit scale you brought it in at as an OBJ or whatever, um, it'll set this scale to compensate. So in ZBrush, it tries to work around these sizes for all, so all the tools work correctly. And then on export, it'll re-evaluate uh, or it'll export based on uh, what it was brought in as. So if I have a, do I have a import STL from my desktop here? Test STL. Oops. Let's grab this one. Okay, so this is from Fusion 360. Let's see what scale we're working at here. Uh, okay, so my size is at two, and then on export, it's gonna scale at 55. So you can see ZBrush brings it in and tries to keep it around two. This is from Fusion 360. So you can see there's my nice, <laughs> whatever, Boolean mesh I made in Fusion 360 with the champers and the fillets. And then uh, on export, it's gonna scale it by, it's gonna multiply by 55, so that's a multiplier to get it back to the scale you're at. Now again, you can use Scale Master to set the scale to whatever you'd like. And then for your insert mesh brushes, brush insert industrial parts here. Let's see if I remember how to use this. Phillips type, IMM draw size, set IMM draw size to five millimeters. So, oh, five millimeters. So then you hold down control and that'll set it to five millimeters. And then if we go back to our head, which is a completely different scale, and then we grab the glasses here. This is five millimeters on this thing. I think that's how it works. And you, you're just holding down control as you drag this out and that's gonna set it to um, the same size. Now we go to cylinder, which is just a primitive. This is a primitive scale. And then there's five millimeters I think that's right. <laughs> uh, John says, I find when making modular lashes like snapping walls, I'm always afraid the edges would shrink a tad from Maya to ZBrush. So one thing you can do in ZBrush, if I remember correctly, um, if you have a cylinder here and you're subdividing up, so it's like, okay, we're gonna go, let's set our crease and we're gonna go Control D, Control D, and then we can increase all and then control D again to get a nice bevel on there. And you're right, if you go back to subject level one, oh no, my vertices changed. So before you do that, um, there's a subdivision cage you can set. Cage button press, ZBrush recalculates placement of the base vertices so the object can force its pre-divided shape here. So if we go through here and we say crease, and then as we subdivide, How do I get this cage to show up? So there's a cage that you can have selected. There's a little bit restored. The cage button provides a means of approximating it. it. Is inactive in the highest resolution mesh is selected. So I wonder if we have to go in here. You can also go in here to morph target. We can store a morph target. Um, and then as you subdivide, You can bring it back and then you can switch and bring that back. But yeah, it's gonna modify your mesh quite a bit. There it is. So let's say divide, divide, and then subdivision level one will make our subdivision cage. Okay, let's try this again. As you can see, it's been a long time since I've had to do this. So we have increase this so divide that once, restore from the highest subdivision level, we can turn on our cage, restore. Hmm. 
Hmm, hmm, hmm. Something, something, look that up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it's working, but something like that. You can go back, if you are subdividing, you can go back to your original cage. Or what you can do is you can go back to your subdivision level 1, re-import your base mesh if you're not changing your vert order, and that'll snap your subdivision level 1 back to the original verts. Maybe. Yeah, those are those are weird, weird things. Wish I had a better answer. Um, what's the best thing to do for a beginner to practice with ZBrush? What program fundamentals do you recommend? Um, well, I mean, let's see. So on my in my CGMA class, uh, at CG Master Academy, I teach. It's not Intro to ZBrush, but it's like ZBrush for concept and iteration. But we do go over a lot of the basics here. Um, if you want, you can go to the Pixelogic classroom. Uh, my YouTube channel has Intro to ZBrush Part One. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna drop these 50 videos whenever I get a second. Um, these are going to be a new updated Intro to ZBrush Part 1. And then, um, so what we do is we go through basic file handling and you know, what is a subdivision, what is a polygon, um, how do you sculpt on a mesh, all that's the good stuff. And then just the basic tools that you can use to kind of just start creating quickly, DynaMesh and stuff like that. And then past there we go into, this class is more about how you create something. Uh, and then iterate on it. So we go through like insert mesh brush idea, uh, insert mesh brushes, and getting your ideas out quickly and doing variants, and then drawing over them in ZBrush or exporting those externally, and then uh, using 2D tools in ZBrush or external 2D tools to kind of flesh out your idea, and then bringing those back in, and then modifying your object to match your design or a design that you bring in. And then these are just creation techniques on geometry. So we kind of go big creation techniques our broad creation techniques, and then these are a little bit more um, detail-oriented, so live booleans and uh, alphas and stuff like that. And then we go into surface treatment, which is like surface noise, uh, all the meshes, fiber mesh, nano mesh, micro mesh, and then array mesh, all that good stuff. And then a little bit of poly painting. And then the last one is just uh, using layers and transposing and posing your character or posing whatever you, you're making and then going in and using ZBrush to render it out. So all of that is how I teach ZBrush. Um, now the best way to learn it, um, I would say the Unchanged ZBrush part one is probably a pretty linear step through of how all the things work. However, I would say if you are gonna go on there and I haven't updated the, the part one yet, uh, intro to ZBrush Part 1 mixed with ZBrush 408, what's new? Because there's a lot of things that changed from my intro to ZBrush, the gizmo especially. And then uh, if you want to get caught up in 2018, there's those videos in there too. So it's a lot of videos, but take good notes. And it's, it's, a, it's also pretty linear. You can kind of step through. Uh, how would you make hair texture for Dragon Ball style hair? Alpha hair texture, not stylized. Um, the, well, hmm. So if you wanted to do cards, so if you scroll through here, is that live stream full episodes? Oh, you know what? These aren't very well organized. I apologize. So under my videos here, there is, so we kind of did a, So here's Dragon Ball Z hair creation. Uh, now again, this is the stylized hair with these hair strands, so this is more sculptural. Um, but I do have that quick load right here. For some reason I threw it, uh, I wanted to say I did. Oh, there it is. So this is where we didn't use fiber mesh, we used, um, oh, it saved my undoes. That I don't need. That's weird. This is where we did this type of hair. Um, and you can watch that video. As far as like alpha cards, it would be... You could do the same thing. It would be a little bit more... More like this where I would do something like, let's see. So for that hair, and I wanted to do alpha cards, uh, the easy answer would be, where in the hell is the star? There it is. So we're gonna go to initialize, and then Q cube. And then, um, 
Let's go ahead and make, so if you just wanted to do hair cards, you know what, here's what I would do. So we're gonna go through here, we're gonna say bevel, edge loop complete, and then hold down control shift, and then hit control W, and then hit control W, and then I'm going to rotate this thing 45 degrees, and we're gonna B, create insert mesh, new stroke, curve on, brush, modifiers, beep, boop, beep, ramp. Okay, so there's our hair, hair starting. Um, and then we can change this. So eventually what you could do, and you could use the exact same methods for creating this. So in that video, we go over like, here's the basic shapes, and then you can go through here. When you're doing hair cards though, you probably don't want to taper them because you would taper them in the alpha so that your alpha cards would kind of taper to a point. Uh, you want to keep your hair cards kind of blocked straight, I think. Um, so if we grab this head here, and uh, you know what, we can, we can just use these. So there's our sweep here. And there's, so there's, there's our stylized where we just did the exact same process only underneath our stroke menu. We have curve modifiers here. You can do intensity and size. We can go thick to thinish. So we go back to our head here. So this is our hair cards. So now it's tapering off. So you can use that, but let's reset this and we'll just turn these off. So this would be where I would start. And then you can, you know, bring in guides, cones for guides or whatever you want to. Um, I can just use these for guides. So I'm gonna put in a hair strand here and you can hit six to kind of smooth these out and then do this. Let's turn off snap. I'm trying to get these to straighten out. Okay, so, uh, and if also if you want these to be embedded, that would be under your brush depth you can embed these things so we can just tap this one so now it'll be embedded you can tap off and drag another one here um, tap off you can hit w you can control drag out a copy and you can move these things around so however you want to create these things and you might be saying well these aren't really hair cards are they and they're not but what you can do is you can take these things here and you can split these up so you can go in here group by normals and then these things right here you can just do uh, one thing you can do is under geometry modified topology, you can do unweld groups border, and you can also probably go through here and you can delete these. Or when you made your hair card, you can leave these um, bottom parts deleted so you don't have to deal with them later. Um, so you can split these apart by going to unweld groups border. Let's see if this will work. And let's do an inflate. Yeah, so you can do a deflate, and now the hair cards are kind of overlapping each other. I think Tony Reynolds showed me this technique. So that's one thing you can do. And now you have overlapping hair cards. Um, another thing you can do is you can do group by normals. And let's go ahead and just do a delete polygroup ball. I'm gonna get rid of these things. So we're just gonna have these blocks of cards. You can also do underneath stroke, you can do polygroups. And then in here, you can add hair cards. So if we wanna make a hair card real quick, this may or may not work that great, but we'll give it a shot. Let's grab our star here, edit, make poly mesh 3D, go down here to Q cube, stretch this out, and then we'll go to bevel, edge of complete, control W, and then delete hidden. So now brush, create insert mesh new, and then curve mode, and I don't, these things tend not to weld very well, but we can always weld them later. So there's our hair card mesh. So now with this brush, we can go back here and then we can just tap. And that'll go ahead and put hair cards along those corners there. So then we can go to our, I need to make these big or as small as you want to. Let's go ahead and uh, delete that. And then we'll go ahead and split mass points. It's under your subtool split menu. And then uh, these ones, you can cross them over a little bit more. And if you're, you can go into your deformers. You can try using the bend curve if you want to bend these things around. I'm, I'm scared too, since uh, my performance seems to be taking quite a hit. Uh, but bend arc, actually, is pretty, there you go. You can go through here, and this is basically just hair cards at this point. So that's one way you can do it. And you can, of course, use, Z spheres to control where those curves go at first. 
Um, in fact, you can use these spheres just to create those things if you wanted to. Actually, let's scale this down. Q. So we go down here to our adaptive skin. We're going to say density of 1, dynamic resolution of 0, hit preview. I like it. Make adaptive skin. And then on the skin Z sphere, if we can go ahead and chop off these ends here, like so, like so, delete hidden. And then now, um, again, if you wanted to use these as, you can go through here, you can go polygroup here, 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 here. So now we can frame our mesh and then use our hair strands to kind of go through. And now we've got hair cards along those, hide point, like so. Or you can even simplify that. If you wanted to make this just like boxy cube, you can go to insert, Z modeler brush, insert single edge loop, and every other one you can just get rid of. And now it's a box, and now you're kind of kind of back where you started. And you can also go through here. You can do polish by features if you want to kind of round these corners out. Or if you really want to do it, do open circle. That'll really smooth that down. And then, then you can go ahead and do all that stuff. Cool. Uh, Video Nomad says at scale 100, one ZBrush unit is one centimeter, I believe. I'll believe you. Um... We've done so kind of stuff, some trips on how to create tileable textures in ZBrush. Yeah, so um, what I would do, there's a couple different ways. You can use your document to do tiling. Uh, what I prefer is underneath Z plugin, there's a nano tile textures. Oh, uh, by the way, if you don't, if you, if this is one that you have to download. <clears throat> Just Google Pixelogic Downloads, go to Download Center, you can go to ZBrush Plugins, and then you can just download all these plugins, Ringmaster, Nanotile Textures, I think you have to download, and then you install them by throwing those files into Z Startup, Z Plug 64. You're gonna put your data folder and your Z script in here, and then when you restart ZBrush, you'll have Nanotile Textures, and then um, you can, on, even on my channel, I believe, uh, you can Google like um, nanotile textures, and I'm sure Joseph Dress will show up there uh, as well. That's that's where I learned it. But on my channel too, there's an I did a like seeds nanotile, um, this little three video series. So you can go through here. You can install the plugin, and then we sculpt a bunch of seeds. And then we use nano tile to do a tiling seamless texture using nano mesh. So you can use that. That'd be my preferred method. Um, if you want to use your document, you can. That would just be like document, turn off proportional, let's say 1024 by 1024. Whoops. Resize. And then in order to see my document, I'm going to go to document and then just zoom out. You get, it's probably really hard to see, but you can kind of change this. Go to document background, and we'll lighten that up a little bit. So now you can see my entire document. If I go over here to actual, this is one to one, so it might clip off the tops there, especially if you're going to 2K or 4K. So I'll zoom out a little bit, and then on here, um, you can use. I mean, it's uh, you can use whatever you want really. So you can go in here, and you can say, "Give me a ring. Bring out a ring." I'm gonna poly, got a polyframe here, and then you can do, uh, you can either do Shift S to drop these things, or you can go out of edit mode and you can hit W, and you can use this gizmo to um, to drag out, uh, copy, or just move these things, rotate these things around. Um, is it Shift S two for these things? Yeah, so you can do Shift S for that. Uh, go back into draw mode, and then if you hold down tilde, that's the key in the upper corner of your screen here you can go here and now we can grab another mesh if we want to and then shift s shift s and i'm staying away from the borders here 
So I can tilde drag, and now we have a tiling material here. So if we like this, we can go to Alpha, grab Doc, and then we can go Control N to clear our canvas. We'll go to Document, W size new document, and then we'll grab a polyplane. Where is that at? Plane 3D. Make poly mesh 3D. We'll go into. Oh, that's one thing we need to do. Alpha, grab our alpha, and we'll go ahead and say export. And then under, uh, you know what we can do? Let's, let's instead of doing a plane, let's try doing a cube. We'll try this. Let's do, actually, we'll make a polymesh video. I'm going to make it simplify this cube. Uh, initialize Q cube. And we'll do under UVs. Is it UV planar? AUV tiles. Hmm. Group UV tiles, that's what I'm looking for. So we'll do uh, GUV tiles here, and now if we go down here to our surface noise, we can go grab that alpha, and then we'll say uh, mix basic noise down to zero, we'll do our strength up, we'll do our focal flip horizontal, and then we'll take, and if you want to, um, we'll turn on UVs, and then noise scale, Oops, alpha scale down. So now what we can do, uh, you, so you can just have this assigned, and then when you go in here to BPR render, um, that'll show you what it would look like displaced, and you can also go in here and you can say, take this focal shift, nope, sorry, not focal shift, uh, offset down a little bit, and you can get rid of anything that's a, uh, would be a black or your document value, it'll get rid of. And now you can BPR under this. And if you want to, you can also go to geometry, convert BPR to geo. And now you have real geometry, which you can go through and manipulate if you wanted to. Um, yeah. Uh, last time you showed us how to pose these spheres, rigging the dog and the, into a bat. How to do rigging to pose something into a position where the other subtools are present. Um, posing that bat on a tree. So, okay, so you wanted to, like, <clears throat> you have a Z-sphere rig on an animal, and you want to pose the animal out, but then also go and put it in a tree. Um, Z-sphere is the only way you can kind of, and it gets weird. The only way, uh, let's go in here. Let's go into comma key underneath project. Let's go to mannequin. So let's say you have something rigged and you wanted to put this somewhere specific. I think, I think the only way to move around Z spheres is underneath deformation offset. You can use offsets to kind of position these things. I'm not sure how well your itch, like if you have a mesh applied to this, I'm not sure how well that'll work, but you can give it a shot. Uh, but generally what I would do is I would just pose out the object and then take that object and then if I wanted to put it in a tree, uh, I wouldn't use Z spheres. So, if, okay, here's what I would do. Let's say you wanted to hang a, uh, like a monkey hanging from a tree. Uh, what I would do is I would take the tree branch it's supposed to be on and I would bring it down to where my monkey is, which is be, you know, and then it's a pose right in the middle of my screen. And then I'd bring in a reference of what that tree branch is going to be. I would pose out the monkey to grab the tree branch however I wanted. And then I would take that mesh and then I would move it into the tree as opposed to trying to move these Z spheres to where it's supposed to go. I would keep the Z spheres rig in the center or just where my object is and then take my object to where it's supposed to go eventually. Um, I think if that if that's answers your question, uh, how to control the insert mesh using Gizmo? I think it's different than the 2018 version. Uh, let me see. 
So if we have a sphere, make poly mesh 3D. And then we go to brush, brush insert, model tool kit, M, let's just drag on something flat. Okay, so you can hold down control, it'll snap it to the size of the brush. You can hold down shift and it uh, snaps it to the previous location. Huh. Um, I know if I want to force it towards me, you can use the picker menu. It's been a while since I've dealt with this. There's the orientation over here. Um, you can turn this on, and then no matter where on your object you drag it, it's always going to be facing towards you because this is the orientation arrow. Um, continuous or orientation is going to pick up the surface normal. Um, let me think. Control the insert mesh, insert angle using gizmo. If there's some tickle in the back of my head. I'd have to go back through and... Hmm. I want to say, like, because you can do... It wouldn't be an insert mesh brush. It would be like this type of thing where you can, you know, mask this thing out. And then... Go grab a sphere, and then like this. This will dictate where the next one comes from. So if you you know rotate it like this, and then grab a poly cylinder, that'll dictate that rotation. There's something. There's something I'm missing. I'm trying to think. I'd have to go back through and watch my videos on I think 2018 or 4 or 8, where I talk about that stuff. That's a good one. Let me think, let me think. Well, I don't want to watch it here, but uh, I'll have to research that a little bit more. I can't keep everything in my brain, unfortunately. Hannibal, hey, it has been a while. Uh, it's the best way to do details such as leather surface details, meta, metal surface breakage, and so on. Me personally, I don't do any surface detail in Pixelogic or in ZBrush unless I have to. It's a little bit destructive, so I'll go into Painter and do it there. Uh, or my texture program, but uh, alphas are probably going to be surface noise is your friend. Alphas are your friend when it comes to surface detail. So if it would be like, for instance, you can go into surface noise and you can turn on noise and then in here you can change the scale. So you can go through here and you can make this kind of noise uh, if you wanted to, and then apply it to your object. There's also, if we do noise plug, there's uh, speckled stone spheres. I'm trying to think. Actually, you know what? Let's hit cancel. Let's go into our light box noise makers. Let's see if there's anything in here that's interesting, like a, like a fabric. There's wood. There's military. There's a lot of weaves, stone, tiles. So you can kind of go through here and see if there's one that strikes your fancy, or at least one that you can kind of start with. And then you can go in here and you can edit uh, the noise that they have applied, although this is just an alpha being brought in. So here's this type of noise you can use. If your object has UVs, you can use the UVs and then change the scale here. That's one way to do it. Um, you can also go through here and you can say uh, this polymesh 3D. So I'll divide this up and then you can use alphas to do that kind of detail. And you can spray alphas if you wanted to. Uh, in fact, yeah, like if you have, here's leathery skin. Um, oops. Let's try that again. Here's leather. I'm going to go to my standard brush. We're going to clone this off and we're going to grab that leather skin. We'll go to drag rect. I can use this. Let's drop our Z intensity down. Hold down alt. So there's some detail stuff you can do. You can also uh, spray it on. So you can go to spray here. You can spray this leather detail on if you want to, or you can hold down alt. 
and spray it on. You can also use simpler stuff like this one here and go through and you can use this to kind of spray on for like leather detail and stuff like that. And you can also, if you want to be safe with it, you can say, let's subdivide this up and you can add, or if you want more options, I should say, you can go in here to layers and you make a new layer and then also, what am I thinking of? Uh, morph target, store morph target. So with your layer active, you can go through here and you can say, okay, here's my leather. And then now if we're done, we can go to our layer here and it's like, you know what? That's too heavy. I want to dial that back. Or you know what? I wanted it to pop out. I forgot. Or it's not heavy enough. I want to crank it up. So you can go through here and dial that in. You can hit bake all. And then if you decide, you know what, I didn't want it to go everywhere. So I can go through here, I can switch my morph target. I can go to BMO to my morph brush. And then you can go through here and you can morph in where you want it. Or you can hit switch and you can morph out where you don't want it. Um, and you can surface noise by mask if you wanted to. So there are a couple different ways. How do you make a VDM face sculpt? Uh, I would use... Well, I mean, uh, if you just want to sculpt it, that would be underneath your tool project, miscellaneous. Uh, go to the Brush 3D template. And then in here, you would just be, I know, I know, standard brush, X symmetry. You can go through here and you can just sculpt out a head. Let's turn off this. Smooth, stronger, there you go. So you can go through here and you can sculpt out your head if you want to and then create a VDM from this. Uh, it takes a while. Um, if you remember on my channel, there's a Houdini VDM. We can give that a shot real quick. So we can say, instead of having to sculpt out a head or project a head with a mouth bag detail and stuff, you can go into, hold on just a second, range. Let's go into our comma key tool. We can say, there's a project. Actually, you know what? Let's do, let's keep it simple. Got our dog here. Um, actually, you know what? We'll do a head. Because we do it ahead. We can do a head. It's not impossible. So we've got our head here, and just to make it even more um, interesting, I'll hold down Control and just drag up, and then invert that, and then let's go ahead and turn off perspective and go to mask lasso, and let's Control Tap, and then rotate this down so we can have a mouth bag in here. So now projecting this through that VDM plane you could you could capture this as an alpha and drag it out but it's just going to be straight back and then you'd have to go through and do a lot of sculpting so what i would do i think is let houdini do some of the heavy lifting for me so we're going to go to go z go z portal opened and now we've got this head here, so we're going to go to go Z. Got our head, file, import, if you need digital asset, and this would be the vector displacement plane. So now we can do a plane here, we can show it. And that's going to project this head through a vector displacement plane for me. Uh, we can go to the back here and you can see we may have to um, rotate these UVs a little bit here to kind of ease that transition. Uh, we can also do UV blur amount or border blur amount is what I'm looking for. And I'll blur that border quite a bit if I can. So anyway, that'll makes that process a little bit easier. And then from here, you can change the resolution. We can give her maybe 10, 24, just to get all that detail back. And you can also 
Uh, be actually, before we do that, let's drag that down to like 256. So nice and low resolution. You can go through here in the clip depth. You can change, whoops. You can push the head out more or in more. It's a little bit choppy. So depending on how much of the head you want, you can dial that in. And then let's go here, let's say 1024, get our detail back. Perfect. Now let's export this. Oops. Go Z export and say you get sent back to ZBrush. So let me go back to ZBrush here. There's our vectors placement plane. So let's go ahead and say chisel 3D. And then we'll go into our brush. And we'll go down here to create. So this chisel 3D here, we're going to clone this off to get its settings. And then we're going to go through and delete all these meshes. Actually, we'll leave a couple around. And I'm going to go to from mesh. So now you're going to see whenever we have these selected, we have the little 3D in the corner. So now if we grab a polyplane, make polymesh 3D, subdivide this thing up, and then we can take our head. Whoops. There we go. You can take our head and pull that through, or this ear. Oh, that's a bit weird. Not sure why it's doing that. The head works. <laughs> uh, let me see. Brush, chisel 3D creature. Huh. When I added this one to the other, the duplicated chisel 3D, it kind of kind of busted it a little bit. I'm not quite sure why I did that. But anyway, that's probably how I would do it. Now it does, it is doing some pretty crazy stuff around the geometry. So you can go through here and you can smooth this out. Um, or you can play with those settings in Houdini and see if you can get a better result. But that's how I would do it. Uh, how, so how do I make a good texture to fit the blocks, clumps of hair? Oh boy. Um, you can try doing like that strand we did, do we still have that one? From the beginning of this episode. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, where basically you have the multiple strands and then you drag those out and you can go through and change them and then you can just capture those strands kind of overlapping and stuff. You can capture that height, you can capture that occlusion, you can capture that texture uh, on your document. And then you can use that to uh, capture to a hair plane, or you can use that to capture your hairs and then apply that to a plane. Um, did they change the curves in ZBrush the last few versions? Um, they made some changes, I think, uh, in the... So brush, curve, strap, snap. So this one, now what you can do is you can hold down, um, you can start moving and then hold down shift and you can smooth out the curve now and you can also um, hold down control and you can twist portions of the curve now and also the elastic setting which is under stroke I believe. They have elastic and liquid so now you can drag out and then you can also pull back th through the curve here. Uh, let's go to liquid yeah, so here's, you can delete portions of the curve just by pulling back through, or you can just pull out, and then you can go through here, and again, you can twist, or smooth, or elastic, all that good stuff. Have you ever tried Lazy Nozumi for parallel lines, straight lines, etc.? Yes, in Photoshop, for sure. But, I am so lazy that if I wanted to do perspective, in Photoshop, I would just do it in 3D first, and then I can change my draw angle, and then I can just do a, um, let's say, crease, and we'll go in here to, I don't even know, one of these things, and we'll go to our materials, and then throw on a stylized renderer here. And that'll kind of give me my line work for me, or we can just do straight up line mark. Uh, so this, if you go to my YouTube channel, we went to uh, zbrushguides.com. So here's my line work. Uh, or we can 
go to the line work here. So you can go to zbrushguides.com and we did a walkthrough of Pablo Munoz Gomez's stylized material. Uh, it's in here somewhere. There it is, stylized rendering. So you can download the guide from here. You can watch me go through it in video. So that's how I do it. Um, I am a draw size. Can't seem to get the slider to go above 10 millimeters. Is that the size limit? Oh, I don't know. Let's take a look. So if we wanted cylinder edit, make poly mesh 3D. And then we want to go to brush insert, industrial parts. We want to put a humongous Phillips head screw on here. So underneath the Z plugin. IMM draw size, we wanted to do like 20. No, you can't. You can only set it to 10 millimeters. Whoa, that's a big 10 millimeters. Let me go to our head here. That's still a big 10 millimeters. Um, so if you wanted to, I guess I guess suppose what you could do is, go out of edit mode. You can use, here's what you can do. Here's what you can do, maybe. So we got a PolyMesh 3D here, and let's say uh, I want to borrow this thing. So I'm going to hit W, and then I'm just going to tap that, and then you can cycle through all these, and you can just steal them. Uh, there's also an IMM extractor in here. So if you want to IMM extract all of these pieces, oops, go and make sure you're in uh, draw mode Q, and then you can extract all of these things, the subtools here. It's like, I want to change this one. So we're going to take this one, and we want this thing to be 10 millimeters. So that's where I would use Scale Master to say make this thing uh, sliders to subtool size. Let's do delete other. Oops. Make polymesh 3D. W, grab this one. I'm gonna unify this. And now we're sitting here with this thing and we're gonna see Calculate size, select some of the generic units, then converse to millimeters. So we have millimeters, set scene scale, value in X. So let's say we wanted to do 15 millimeters, set scene scale. So 1.75 millimeters. Resize subtool. Resize select so we'll devote values unit measurements. So okay, this is where we want it to be. Fifteen millimeters. So now if this thing is fifteen millimeters, then you wouldn't want to make an insert mesh brush out of this. You would essentially want to append it and just move it around. Or once you've done that, uh, it's like, okay, this is fifteen millimeters, then I suppose you could set your brush size to match this, but I don't know how exact that would be. That's a tough one. I'm not sure about that one. I wish I had a better answer. Again, a lot of, a lot of brain teasers here. Uh, oh, you know what? I haven't checked. Cool. Uh, ben asked on Facebook, why do you delete the ends? I think that was with the hair stuff. Uh, that's just so when I go through here, uh, you know what? We can just stick with, yeah, that's fine. So when you go through here, actually, let's do this. Insert multiple edge loops, and we'll just drag out a bunch. So if you wanted to do, say, group by normals, and then I wanted to frame these just so I can have these long, these lengths controlling like where my wires go or where my hair goes. Um, and then we go into our stroke here. And then we do frame mesh by polygroups. You're gonna see it's gonna frame the top polygroups too. Not ideal. So that's where I would go in here and just delete hidden, delete hidden. And then now when I frame my mesh, It'll just be this direction and not also this top piece here. So then we could do brush, curve, strap, snap, and then uh, put that one on there. Now, if it's only it's only gonna do one at a time, um, looks like I lost, that's not framing all the way through. 
Weird. Um, but anyway, uh, if you do need to, you know, do more than just one at a time and it's only going to do one, you can go up here and you can see where snapshot is. That's uh, the hotkey for that is five. So you can hit five. Oops. Five. 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 And then we can delete our things here. And then we can just grab a little piece of this one. Control shift A. Oh, you know what? Did these come unwelded or something? Maybe that, that's, I think that's why the curve didn't go all the way through, is these somehow got unwelded. Split hidden. And now you have your straps. And then, yeah, so Babu's talking about on this thing here, turning off your dynamic draw size. Yeah, I don't know. Scale. Scale is something where if I if I need to be very precise, I'll go into Fusion 360 and make everything like millimeter specific, and then I'll bring that into ZBrush, and that's the scale I work at, as opposed to trying to jump through like scale master hoops and IMM scale things. It just I don't know. It's too much for my brain. Do you use the GoZ plugin? Uh, yeah, we just use it for Houdini. I don't use it a lot. Um, but occasionally, depending on the type of work I'm doing, I'll use GoZ. Uh, but usually I just stay in with the ZBrush most of the time. Do you still stream on your own channel? I should. Uh, this month has been horrendous, and next month is also going to be horrendous. So we're in August still, right? September, I'm pretty much hosed. After ZBrush Summit, September 27th, October, I should be back on track. I'll have a bunch of cool stuff to show you guys. Um, We'll, we'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> Give me another month. And then I'll, hopefully I'll have enough time to get these videos out too. I've, I've just been sitting on them for months. Um, yeah, I'm not sure when my next stream is. I'm going to have to say my next stream is probably going to be in October. Ooh. I need, I know, I need to be back on more, but I apologize. I do. Alrighty. It's 8 o'clock. Uh, I'll let you guys get back to your regularly scheduled lives. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Hopefully that was worthwhile, and uh, I'll be back, and we'll have some more specific project stuff to work on, I think, come October. But um, cool. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.